afraid to swallow, dude. I'm afraid. <laughs> oh, oh. This is the dumbest video we've ever done on Epic Homesteading. And that is the spicy, spooky AMA. <gasps> So Jacques, <laughs> I'm actually legitimately scared for this, I have to say. I'm a little bit worried. You're a little worried. A little I'm bit. very worried, guys, because we asked you to ask us your burning questions. And the format is as follows. Jacques will ask me the questions while we both eat progressively hotter peppers and just see what happens. <laughs> We're just gonna see what happens. So Jacques, do you have your protection? Well, I'll tell you what. First of all, we are definitely in this together. And I have a series of protection First of all, gloves. Safety I also first. have gloves. <laughs> that, those are the right kind of gloves for a spicy spooky AMA. Be, why? Why? Because I'm legitimately afraid <laughs> of touching my eyes. So what's your spice level, first of all? Like the you go to a Thai restaurant, what do you say? I, well, what I've learned is if you say zero, you don't get a sauce at all. Yeah. So you don't say that. <laughs> but I've usually I've said maybe a three. Yeah. So Why? Th Not because I can't handle a seven, because I used to be a seven. Here we go. But because the consequences. I was gonna say, you say three, cause you know it's gonna be anywhere between three, five, six, seven. So yeah. the hottest I've gone is eight. So I've never gone, I've gone eight. pretty hot. Pretty I've never hot. gone eight. But we're gonna gone. start off easy. So we're gonna start it off with a sweet pepper and that is Escamillo. Okay. So this is Scoville zero. This is a zero. And so, in fact, it may be positive cause it's sweet. <laughs> You're gonna so go for the bite? I think I'm gonna, gonna just go, go in for a bite. Let's take a bite and then I'll ask you a question. Right. Or I'll ask you first actually. Have you ever encountered something terrifying while gardening? For me, it was a stinkhorn, lol. <laughs> <laughs> the most terrifying thing I think I've ever encountered, maybe the first time I saw it was dog vomit mold. Oh uh, yeah. Because I didn't know anything about fungal life and I had no clue. <laughs> and then you look the name up and you're like, is this gonna kill me, right? It, Cause <laughs> right. It's, it's a slime mold, right? So it, yeah. it sort of creeps and, and morphs around. Besides that, I haven't found like a bone, I found bones, but of animals or something. <laughs> no, no, nothing too, nothing like a human skull, yeah. like nothing like that. I would say that probably is the scariest thing. Nothing like absolutely terrifying. Yeah, that's true. And it's, it's a little scary because when you hit it with water, it just like, and you're like, is that gonna kill me? If that's the part that I got afraid, because yeah. I have a paranoia about inhaling things. <laughs> yes. You know this, yeah. I don't, if it's a particle, it's true. not in my lungs, it's not gonna be in my lungs, <laughs> so that, I don't like it. So here's the thing, we have a lot of questions from you guys and we have less Peppers than questions. So we're gonna do yeah. a couple, we'll couple do a questions couple, per pepper. Maybe a little fluid. Okay. All right, so how has your gardening techniques changed over time and what would you like to change now? That's a great question. I would say dramatically. Absolutely dramatically, right. like night and day and then night and then another day. Especially your much, first start. Yeah, my first garden was hard to even compare to anything I'm doing now because it was, it was hydroponic. And also I had no knowledge of synthetic versus organic. Right. I had no knowledge of soil health. I had no knowledge of really plant biology and, and how it how plants grow and function, light, any of that stuff. And so it was just what everyone does when they start, which there's of course no judgment on. Right. Go to the store, buy whatever, put it in a pot, hope it grows. If it doesn't, you think, oh, I just don't have a green thumb. So it's changed dramatically. I would say where I want it to go is I really want to be more intentional about the design of yeah, things. That's, that's tricky. That's one. where I want to go. And that's I can't see things that way. It's difficult for me. So we'll see, I might need some help. All right, so now that we've done two questions, let's spice it up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> this is a small leap, and this is the bikino pepper. So this is not a very spicy pepper. It's probably Scoville of like 100, 200, maybe 1,000. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna just take this and pop it right in. I'm going straight in with it, and this one. Just don't cough. This one is the one at Trader Joe's. Dude, honestly, it's already kind of spicy is the thing. And we might be going up. I mean, you don't even want to know the Scovilles on these. Dude, What's I'm that? not looking forward to this. <laughs> All, right. All right, next question. Next question. What other climates would you want to try gardening in? Precipitation, temperature, <laughs> seasons, light conditions. Are there any zones or climates you'd prefer to the one that you're in? Um, prefer? No, I wouldn't prefer another climate. because it's, it's it, this. So the land mass that has this climate in the world is less than I think 1.3% of all land on earth. He's done the math. So it's extremely rare to have this level of a climate. Now, what do I miss? I guess I can't miss it. I've always grown up in San Diego, <laughs> but but I do miss the idea of a fall where your deciduous trees drop. I get to make my leaf mold for the, yeah. for the fall and the winter. I get to go out and I get to pull up my cold frame and pull some fresh vegetables. <laughs> it does sound I, nice. It sounds great. So it's either that Maybe not like a zone three or four, but maybe like a, maybe like a seven, right? Yeah. 
or going full tropical, oh. I think could also be really interesting because the fruits that you get access to That's true. is insane. Yeah. What about I'd you? I'd probably go to like an eight. You I go think to an eight. Eight's pretty nice. You get a little bit of everything. You could still go through the winter. Yeah. Next question. What are the top five proudest moments in your garden? <laughs> Maybe just one top moment. And how the top moment of engaging the gardening community. So like a little bit of a bonus. Oh, there. okay. The top moment of engaging the gardening community. I would say it's either the loofah stuff that we've done yeah. for the last few years. I'm not gonna say I put loofahs on the map <laughs> as far as gardening goes, certainly not. But I will say, after I started growing them, a lot of people started growing. Yeah, loofah and, and dragon and fruit. Loofah, dragon fruit, I mean, look, everyone comes from everything else. You're standing on the shoulders of giants, right? Like I learned about dragon fruit from Richard and fortunately the, the Epic community kind of took to it, right? Yeah. So I would say those two, I like making memes out of the plants. So potato, potato <laughs> daddy, the garlic daddy, all these things I, I want to adopt. I want to become the right. father of these plants. You're always daddied up. I'm daddied up, if I can be. What about you? Your uh, proudest moment. My proudest moment was harvesting the wine cap mushrooms. Mm. I literally screamed in joy when yeah. I walked out in the garden. And you know his vibe. He's never, yeah. this is probably the fourth time he screamed in his life. He's I literally ran inside the house and was like yelping. And yeah. everyone's like, what's going on? I was like, mushrooms are ready. Mm -hmm, like they just mm -hmm, pop out of the mm -hmm, ground mm -hmm. and they're ready. It's amazing. Well, here's what I'll say amazing. about that. As we know, he's a garden hermit. He, he's mellow. He keeps to himself, sure. very chill vibes. He texted me and he said, bro, you gotta try these mushrooms. They're so amazing. He, he ran over. I can only imagine you ran or skipped or floated over to my house. <laughs> and then he had them on a plate and he's like, dude, you gotta eat this. And so like, I've never seen you on that level before. <laughs> he was like on a phone call too. He's like, I was like, just yeah, he's like feeding it to me, like a you know, <laughs> not doing much for our fan fictions, no, but it is yeah. what it is. So the next step is a little bit spice here. We're gonna step it up with a banana pepper. So banana peppers are kind of a little bit all over the place. So we'll see what this one brings us. Okay. But let's get into it. Are there any plant or gardening based horror films you would recommend while <laughs> candy? The deeper the yeah, cut, it's called, the better. It's called my old YouTube videos. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what it's called. Those are it. Hold on. Bad. Bon appetit. Cheers. That's not bad. Homegrown? Mm. That's probably why it's not spicy. That's why there's no flavor. I babied it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you were, <laughs> were only one vegetable, one fruit, and one green bean or herb for the rest of your life, what would your top three be? So for vegetables, I'm going to use the botanical definition of which there isn't one which means I'm just gonna say whatever I want for vegetables. Now fruits, I'm gonna oh, stick okay. to the body. Okay. I thought fruits. you were gonna pull like a little wild card. No, 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 no. Solanaceous. No, no, no. So, so for <laughs> vegetables, if you're gonna count a potato as a vegetable, which I don't, personally in my mental map of, of veggies, it doesn't really fit. It's sort of in its own yeah. little shrined category. I would say potatoes for me. Now, if we're talking fruit, and I'm gonna use the colloquial definition yeah. of a fruit, right? Like what are you, a sweet thing that you eat? Yeah, something like that. I would actually say, people are gonna want me to say dragon fruit, but I actually think it might be strawberries. Oh, interesting. If we're talking just producers, producers, producers. Hmm. And then grains or herbs. The problem is I'm trying to think practicality yeah. versus uniqueness. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Not like, like your it, favorite. No, 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 if it's, if it's my favorite, sure, like dragon fruit, I mean, let's do dragon fruit. But if it's like, I, it's the only one I can grow for oh, the rest right, of my life, right. then it might be strawberries, right? So if it's, if it's a grain, I guess I'd go wheat. But if it's an herb, what's the most versatile herb? It's probably just gonna be ba something like basil. Yeah, I'd say thyme for me would be thyme. the most versatile. I do tomatoes, fruit, I don't even know. Honestly, I can't even think of it. You're not much of a fruit watermelon. guy. Watermelon, let's say watermelon. Watermelon, really? Yeah, I oh. love water. I could destroy water faster <laughs> than your chickens, I'll tell you that much. Okay, okay. And for a grain or bean herb, I'd say all the herbs and then peas, because I love shelling peas. They're just mm, amazing. Mm, mm, mm. I could do some beans. Beans, beans, beans are beans. good. Real good. All right, okay. this is a free one, so maybe we'll eat a pepper while we're doing it. What type of bedding do you have in your chicken coop? And do you have to do anything for your trees in the winter? So trees in the winter, it's a combo question there. <laughs> trees in the winter, um, <laughs> trees in the winter, it really depends on the tree. If it's if it's a deciduous tree, it's a good time to kind of prune in the fall, clean it up, da 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 da. Yeah. If it's a, you know something like a citrus, then you kind of don't do anything in the winter, but you may, might shape it. Uh, I guess if you're trying to push something out of the zone, you may want to cover it or something like that. But right. Uh, for winter care, a lot of it's like cleanup, pruning, yeah. and, and waiting, honestly. We don't really have to do much here in San Diego. Yeah, and we'll put all the hemp stuff for the uh, coop in the description. It's just hemp bedding. Yeah, hemp much. bedding yeah. works really well. We both use it. So next up, these ones got a little bit mixed up. They could both be jalapenos or both be serranos. Oh, yeah? So we're going to start with this. 
So let's go ahead. I'm gonna just bite it. Just I don't gonna know bite what's it. gonna happen. It's, well, what, wait, oh, Scoville's only like eight thousand, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. <sh> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm afraid to swallow, dude. I'm afraid. <coughs> I'm afraid to swallow it. Should I swallow it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that was. Hold up. Hold up, bro. <laughs> It's not voting well for us. We're, we're three members deep. We're, oh my God, dude. Give me this yogurt. That <coughs> wrecked me. I already got the hiccups. What is your plan for next season? Any special crops you're trying to experiment with that need to complete? Or sorry, any experiment? <laughs> <laughs> what is your plan for next season? My plan for next season <laughs> is number one, we're working on a ton of amazing guides for you guys. Full seed to harvest. 10, 15, maybe even 20 crops dropping in the spring. So we're gonna show you the whole life cycle of the plant. I'm very excited about that. Little but little this this year, we talked about it on the recent podcast step, Jacques and I, well, we're doing different things. Ooh. But what I'm doing is I expanded in my varieties last year and contracted in some. So my tomatoes, I might expand again next year because this year was contraction. Now it, my cabbages, I only grew like two last year. Right. Now I have like six. Yeah. So I'm trying to find a variety <laughs> that I like and then coming back down to size, right? So to me, it's about this growth, expansion, contraction, find the varieties that work. That's what I'm excited about. Well, should we step it up and keep this train going? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Oh, so uh, let's call this, who knows what it is. It could be a jalapeno. Could be a serrano, it could be some beast that we have no idea what it is. All right, well, I'm going in, tip only. That's it. Tip only. I'm traumatized. This is, this I is think fine. the serrano. This is, yeah. this is the serrano. This is, this is easy. This isn't even hot. It's kind of nice. The question I have is if you eat something hot, no, oh, we're <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> All right. Other than gardening, do you have any other hobbies? Are you rooting for the Padres? The other hobbies I have, I used to, I used to do them a lot more, quite right. frankly. I mean, running Epic is 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 a little bit time consuming, little but I used to rock climb a ton, skateboard a ton. <clears throat> I'd go fishing a lot. I'd go swimming at the pool, like, you know, real human activities that I, I don't do <laughs> as much anymore, but I am trying to get back into it. Yeah, for me, it's really being outside, right? Hiking, being yeah. outside, camping. Yeah. All right, we're gonna step it up a notch with the yellow chili pepper. So that's kind of a colloquial name. Honestly, this is the only pepper in this lineup that was purchased at the store. Mm -hmm. I needed something in between to kind of ease this up, that train. So this is allegedly around 50,000 Scovilles. This is a third-ish of the hottest I've ever had. Okay, so we're, we're getting up. We're there. inching, we're inching. So do you want me to cut you a chunk? Yeah, cut me a little Cut you a little off. chunk, so I'm gonna do this. Okay, oh, that was a clean cut. I know, well, the Felco Oxbow, it's hard to go wrong. <laughs> so you go in, and I'm gonna do a little bit of that. Got a little ambitious with this double pepper Bon situation. appetito. All right. Do you prefer growing in ground or in containers? This isn't hot. <laughs> it's not hot. At all. This is as hot as the sweet pepper. Yeah, there's not really an answer there, man. I mean, I think like in, in containers is amazing, obviously, for space reasons, for control reasons. There is something. <coughs> <laughs> something came up. Uh, is it hitting you? Something snuck up a little bit there. Something just came from the deep there. So there's something about growing in the ground that is primitive. It's primal. It's, it's like the way, right? I mean, everything it's did not start in containers. Right? how we started. So to me, I think there's something inherently satisfying. Plus, like, you know you have this whole buffer of soil in the ground to kind of right, really nice. right your wrong, so to speak. Yeah. So I don't mind in ground at all, but obviously I have a fond soft spot for, for raised bed gardening. Yeah, I'll say the raised bed gardening, for me, what did it was when we were transplanting in your beds, because I didn't have any raised beds. Yeah. And you just like reached into the earth of the bed and mm -hmm. just like pulled the plant up and like moved it. I was like, yes. whoa, Yeah. I can't do that in ground. No, you cannot. So, there are some yeah. advantages. Well, plus like I'm 6'3", so <laughs> right. it's, it's kind of nice to not have to bend over all the time, but it is what it is. We're gonna spice it up to a serious level now. Oh no. With a spicy question. Oh, shoot. And chiltepin peppers. This is actually thought to be like basically the originator of peppers. This is like- Seriously? One of those like land race, like native peppers. It does look in land racy. In yeah. the sense of like, it's not impressive, it's but it's there, impressive. it's there. But I'll tell you what is impressive is the Scovilles on this, because this goes up to about 100K. Are you serious? Yeah. So we're now <clears throat> in serious territory. I need to and access this. Look at the my, size of this. With my claws. That is a baby Should pepper. I just eat it right off the plant? Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> you wearing claws. Oh. <laughs> Any more naked gardening? That's questions? straight seed. 
Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. For those that don't know, there's a holiday called World Naked Gardening Day that honestly only the British really participated in for a while because something about Brit culture, it's like very modest and then they get naked sometimes. <laughs> okay. That's what I noticed. I mean, all the Brits do it. So I said, I'll do it. I did it, I think two years in a row and I've gotten roasted both times. Absolutely roasted. The first year I got roasted for being too white. The next year I got roasted for not being whatever. <laughs> naked what, enough. I, I, no, I was so naked the, 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 the second time. It was right over there. Was, Your first post was removed. It was too naked. First post got, yeah, I was too naked. Let's just say we were growing a couple crops in that, in that photo. <laughs> I think I'll do it every year. I mean, as long as it's a thing, I think I'll do it. And I do expect you to participate, Jacques. Not with me, but in your own space. Is this part of my mouth right now? Feels like there's like a crater. Didn't you say Pop Rocks help? Sugar might help. So I have some chocolate. Are there any plans to add some content for even colder climates? Even colder than Chris's. I'm up here freezing my tukus off in zone three, trying to make it happen. What I'll say is this. By the time this comes out, We've probably announced a new creator here at Epic Gardening, which I'm very excited about. Brianna from Blossom and Branch Farm. She's in zone five. So it's not your zone cool. three for those of you who are in colder zones, but come on, I mean, zone five. Yeah. That's right in the middle of the bell curve, you know? Totally. So <laughs> she has a true winter, true fall, true spring, follows more of the classic sort of climate recommendations for planting. So yeah, I mean, the goal guys is teach the world to grow. We can't do that from here because we can grow a lot of stuff that a lot of you watching just can't ever grow or can't grow all the time. Yep. And so that's why we're trying to get some new creators on. So if you have someone you'd really like to see join the team, comment them down below. I'll say this though, I think that made it worse. The chocolate? Yeah. Honestly, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling oh, you're good. Feeling, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Well, in that case. Oh no, dude. So, <clears throat> homegrown, of course. This is. No, dude. <laughs> This is probably the prettiest pepper of the bunch. Um, it's got this nice little shape, little, you know, cute little hanging balls. Um, it's allegedly the red naga. I think it's mislabeled because it's not red. It's not red at all. So I don't know how I label that. What is your favorite dragon food variety now? I'm just waiting for, I'm just waiting. Okay, well I better answer while I can. My favorite dragon fruit to grow, my friends is probably the Sour Patch Kid from my friend Richard, Grafting Dragon Fruit. Why? Not, is it because it's the tastiest? No, it is very good, but it's not the tastiest. I would say Ecuador Pelora, very sweet. But it, why? It's because my friend Richard gave it to me. I cherish it. I'm like one of the few who has the original generation of that, of that plant. So. <laughs> <laughs> Having issues with squirrels digging up everything I plant. Any idea what I could do? For squirrels, guys, honestly, I don't deal with them, but the best way <laughs> I've seen is to give them, <laughs> is to give them an area where they can eat. So mm. plant a garden away and put an actual squirrel feeder with squirrel food in there. Okay. And just let them exist, because really, are you getting away from squirrels? You're absolutely not. I, I actually did there. deal with squirrels back in the day at my old place, my loquat tree in the front yard. Oh, really? Those little boys would <laughs> climb. I, I and mean, look, dude, they would climb on the telephone pole, on the wire, and drop into the tree. So there's you no way. Beat that. There's, there's no way you can beat that. You got to either play the game or just Ugh. let them win the game. Check out that Mark Rober video if you want to see how creative they could get. They I'll are so creative. Okay. All right. Next Ugh. question What is the most annoying crop to grow as I move this pepper over? Oh, no, dude. This is a heavy one, actually. The most annoying crop to grow. The most annoying crops have been ones that I've tried for years and just I never get anything worthwhile. So number one, peanuts. I was gonna say. I keep trying peanuts. There's actually a video, I unlisted it on the Epic Gardening <laughs> channel because it's such a bad video, but it was called, <laughs> it was called <laughs> My Pathetic Peanut Harvest. <laughs> it was back in the early days. And I literally harvested five peanuts <laughs> and I roasted them in a tiny little pan. <laughs> and then I ate the five peanuts. And honestly, they were fire. <laughs> roasted peanuts were good. I like buttered them yeah. up, salted them up. Ooh. But no, peanut peanuts, super frustrating for me. What about you? Actually, I was going to say like peanuts, sweet potatoes. It's like, it just doesn't get hot enough here for them to thrive. I keep trying. I'm getting yeah. a little better every year, but they are frustrating. And that's mostly just because we just don't really have an option. Yeah, I mean, I failed with bananas, a lot of stuff. All right, oh, no. <clears throat> so what now we we're getting in to some pepper that you might have heard of before, and that is the Scotch Bonnet pepper. Okay, so here's the question. Are you gonna eat half of it? Uh, have you ever oh. considered getting a bee colony? I'll skip that. 
<laughs> yes, actually, I expect that next spring, probably, we we will have bees here <laughs> at Epic Gardening. I really hope to use that flow hive. Yeah, it looks really I hope cool. to use the flow hive, but I have a friend, a uh, uh, girl next door, up. honey, who's, uh, yeah, I'd glove up if I were you. <laughs> do you want to do a quarter or a half? Let's do quarters. Quarters? Well, maybe I'll eat the other quarter. Oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared now. I'm scared to go, oh, okay. This one's like, oh, it's kind Sweet. of fruity. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Don't laugh. I got, I got to take, I got to take it down with yogurt. I got to take it with yogurt. Oh, the nose. <laughs> The noses are going. I want to break down my leaves from this fall to make compost. What's the <laughs> easiest thing to add to it to make that happen? I don't want to answer because I know that I'm going to, it's, I can feel, I can feel, it's like walking up a ladder and at the top is hell. What was the question? <laughs> okay, so to make leaf mold go faster, Ooh. look, there's a guy you really need to follow for this, Tony O'Neill, Simplified mm. Gardening over in the UK. He's extremely good at leaf mold. <laughs> But the, the thing with leaf mold is, it's called that for a reason. It does have to have fungal domination, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it, it has to do that. And so I think one thing you could do Ooh. is finally shred it. But if you shred it to such a level, it starts to mat. And if it starts to mat, then it can get anaerobic pockets and, and such. So like, I think a lot of the stuff with soil building, it's like, the answer is kind of just no. There isn't a lot you can do to speed things up that much. <clears throat> you won't get the same result. Basically. No, no, I mean, it's, it's why, look at Charles Dowding's garden. Yeah. Yes, it's a no-dig garden. Yes, he's an incredible gardener, takes care of it in, to an incredible level. He's an absolute master of his craft, but he's also been growing there for 20 plus years. Right. So I can't get on his level until I get my soil to that point. And that's just part of the reality of it. Yeah, anyone will tell you it takes like at least four or five years or something. Think about it this way. It. Think about it this way. If you started working out when you were 15, right. playing baseball, like my friend did, and I was playing Pokemon, right? <laughs> and I start working out now, <clears throat> and he's been working out for 20 years, I will not ever get as muscular as him if he keeps doing what he's doing. Right. It's That's impossible not necessarily catch up. It's not necessarily true. Like I can't, certainly I can put on more mass if I like devote my life to it, but you get my point. Like right. he's got 20 years of latent habit and muscle building that's sitting on him all the time. Honestly, that was bad, but it wasn't like- It wasn't as bad as it I wasn't atrocious. thought it could be. Hold up, hold up. I know what we need. Pop rocks. Oh, I feel like the pop rocks honestly <laughs> could go. Really I bad. think these are going to be really bad. Yeah. <laughs> All right, great. So we're, we're agreeing there. No, but we're doing it. All right, but here's the freebie then. Okay. Did you both garden as children? No, I didn't. Did you? I didn't garden per se, but my mom <laughs> always had a... <laughs> my mom had a garden always. She tended it. You were around it. Thumb. You, you were, you I was were around immersed. It. I was yeah. in the tomato leaves, you know, eating it off the plant directly, trying to <sighs> absorb as much as I can. But I think that trickled down. <laughs> To where I am today. Kick those rocks. Ugh. Have you ever touched a prickly pear fruit with your bare hand? Yeah. Not only have I touched it with my bare hand, I've touched it with my bare most of my body because oh, I fell okay. into one once. So, for those that don't know, the prickly pear or a puncha has normal sort of cac cactus <laughs> spikes, but then at the base of the spikes, it has what are called glockids, and the glockids look nice and furry and sort of friendly, <laughs> but they're basically like almost fiberglass-esque and they have a pointy end. Right. And so when they get in your skin, number one, it's kind of hard to see them, but number two, it's very difficult to get them out. Right. And like even if, yeah, even if you do, I mean, you kind of have to take those like flathead tweezers and just rip right. and like pull, keep doing but it. even if you do, the end is still in you. And so you kind of have to just wait it's it just out. Itchy. So here's the pro tip, and this is a very niche tip for you gardeners <laughs> out there, it's very niche. But if you do find yourself <clears throat> harvesting prickly pears, what you can do is you can take some tongs and put them over a flame like the burner, uh, yes. and you just burn all the glockids off, uh, and then and then you're good. You're good it's, to it's go. It's completely fine, and you'll literally watch Ooh. them burn. It's very fascinating. All right, I say we move up. I think we move. I up. think we we start to get actually real here. All right, what do we have here, Jock? All right, so this pepper here is called the Red Devil's Tongue. This is basically a habanero that's maybe boosted up a little bit. So we're talking <sighs> potentially up to the 500K <coughs> going on. It's up to five? 500K, yeah. They ask oh. you, are you, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. So we're gonna each eat a whole one. What? <laughs> no, I'm gonna do that. Oh, dude, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Look can you inside. see the oil inside? Look inside, you can see the oils. So that's not okay. You're removing the entire seed packet? Yeah, you know. So first of all, I've said it before, 
and I was wrong. The seeds don't have the spice. The seeds don't. It's the pith. It's the pith. Which you also removed. I'll, I'll have kind, you know. I'll uh, have partially, you know. Partially. Partially. Okay. I'm All just right, gonna you know what? I'll eat the whole half then. If you, you... <laughs> Priapus. <laughs> the Greek god of gardens. What? <laughs> Priapus, the Greek god of gardens, comes down from the heavens and says that he's not impressed with your garden. And you only have 90 days to impress. <laughs> Who asked this question? <laughs> Andrew, to impress him or else you'll be smitten. <laughs> What'd you grow? Oh no, dude. Make dude, me, there's, one, the there's one part of my tongue that's so hot right now. <laughs> what I will do is I will use a seven layers permaculture method okay. to transplant in slash grow a lattice work of beautiful trees all the way down to the ground cover and the mycorrhizal layer. And then I will I will have chickens roaming through, I will have arches, Ooh. I will have I will have ponds, uh streams. <laughs> yep. I'll have a stream. <clears throat> I'll have uh fountains. <laughs> Fountain. I'll have fountains, fountains of sorts. I think the Greeks would want like you know, some sort of the aesthetic. Sound of water. They, they want something grand, they want something majestic. Right. I'll have I'll have columns. I'll have columns in there. Okay. And then besides that, everything will be immaculate. And everything, when Pri on the day Priapus reaches the garden on, on my judgment day, nothing will be harvested at all. It will all be perfectly ripe, just hanging there. Garden of Eden. Just waiting. And I'll say, Priapus, eat of my fruit. <laughs> you know? And then that's, you know, I think that's it. How is he going to be mad? He can't be. So do we do this? So I think we just, we go in for the kill shot. So let's let's bring that guy over. So as we've alluded to, the, the wrinkly... The more wrinkly the pepper is, I like that one over there looks the scariest. The more like surface area it has, I think that's gonna be the spiciest pepper. This is a Butch T Trinidad Maruga Scorpion. 1.5 million Scoville. Oh yeah, so 1.5 million Scoville. This is, we stepped up from 500K, 3X, <laughs> from that first Serrano that Remember, almost took me out. we started at 100. Yeah. Then we went to the Serrano, which was like 8,000. <laughs> We've gone to 500,000, and we're now saying, yeah. no, that's not enough. We're going to triple 1,500. That's because we respect million. the viewers. Uh, I'm afraid. I might have to throw everything away after this. This is too toxic. <laughs> All right. Hold on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start chewing to prepare myself to ask you a question. Okay, I'm going to start chewing. Oh, I don't like the texture. Oh, it's slimy, dude. <laughs> Where do you see Epic Gardening five years from now? Do you think it will be interested in starting an Epic Gardening program with schools and struggling neighborhoods? Or gardening talks around the U.S. or maybe the world? Feel the mucus bullet. Oh, dude. <laughs> That's going to be a bad one. Dude, I can't feel anything yet. I know. Because my mouth is so watery. My mouth is yeah. full of so much water. <laughs> Your body is just like, no. Okay, I swallowed, I swallowed, I swallowed. Okay. Epic in five years. Do I want to have community gardens? Um, yes, I do. I want to I want to set up community garden programs. We actually hope to do one here in San Diego, and that's definitely not on a five-year timeline. It's much quicker than that. Mm -hmm. I see Epic Gardening owning some cool nurseries in the future, Epic Gardening Nursery in real life. I see us you know, bringing on amazing creators, gardeners like Jacques and, and Chris and Brianna, uh, translating into different languages. I think Epic Gardening in Spanish is coming pretty soon. So I really think there's, I think gardening is not going anywhere and I think it's gonna only become more important. And honestly, my tongue over here is lit right now. I feel like. It's like back, yeah. it's deep. Why is it so deep? It's like in my root canal. It feels like it's in my tongue, <laughs> like in it though. Mm -hmm. Should, did you do the other half? Not yet. Hold on, should we do it? I guess, I don't think we should, but. <laughs> Scared. Did you act like this off camera, or is it all a ruse? <laughs> we shouldn't have done that. No, because... <laughs> oh, God. Oh. No, you know what? We need the Pop Rocks. <laughs> we need the Pop we need Rocks. The pop rocks. <laughs> Do I act like this on camera, or is it all a ruse? <laughs> imagine, if, imagine if it was a ruse. <laughs> it would be so hard to pull off. Imagine if this was a ruse. Ugh. Imagine... This is real, guys. No, no, I mean, look. When you're on camera, guys, you're obviously not the exact same human being that you are in normal life. I mean, I'm not absurd 24-7 in all scenarios, but in my innate nature, it is to be this way. That's what you mean. You, what, do you, what do you think, Jacques? Am I like this all the time? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. I'll tell you what, the hype is real. When he sees that rain, 
It's a genuine reaction. Oh, yeah. Because I saw it live in person <laughs> before it was recorded. Sometimes it's that childish wonder it keeps you young, dude. It keeps you young. <sighs> well, I'll tell you what. That was pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> that was a ruse, dude. I got to hit some pop rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get some of that, actually. Dude, I honestly have to say, I think that's what cures it. <laughs> I think that's it. I think it's a sensory overload. My body doesn't know what's happening. I think it's muscle confusion. <laughs> <laughs> There's explosions happening on so many levels. It's a famous fitness technique that to Tony Horton of, of P90X, Ooh. I think it works for this too. <laughs> it's working for some Muscle confusion. <laughs> but you know what? That's actually the end of our questions for this one. Thank you guys for watching. <laughs> Sorry this was so chaotic. Good luck in the garden. <laughs> and keep on growing. <laughs> Imagine. This is real, guys.